Without a healthy river and a healthy environment here, Iraq people would cease to exist. There can't be Yurok people without the Klamath River. It's woven into the fabric of our being, I guess you could say. Growing up as a kid, I, I lived on the river and, and fished a lot. It wasn't really difficult. It was just, there was a lot of fish. And now I have children of my own. And so for the past few years, I've been taking them out and we've been trying really hard and we haven't caught a whole lot. My name is Barry McCovey Jr. I am the fisheries department director for the Yurok tribe. Well, not a whole lot of excitement here today. The Klamath River was the main food source for the Yurok tribe in historic times, kind of pre-contact. So basically any time of year, there would be a, a fresh run of fish coming into the river, whether it's lamprey or, or smell or salmon. There was always some fresh source of protein coming into the river. We've seen up to 90%, sometimes over 90% of the historic fish runs are gone now. The river is nothing compared to what it once was as far as its ability to produce fish for people to eat. Starting with the first influx of settlers during the gold rush in the mid 1800s, uh, the river has been impacted. And then that was quickly followed by the logging industry. And then there was overfishing in the oceans, um, and then hydropower came along and dams and diversions. Now, you know, we're facing climate change. In these last few years, especially, we're starting to really see it. So there's this all of these stressors and impacts on, on the river for the past 150 years. And if we look at geologic time and how long all these species have been here over millions of years, and then all of a sudden in 150 years for everything to change like that, species are having a hard time adapting and keeping up with that change. And so we don't have the opportunities that we wish we had or that we had in the past or that we hope to have in the future to where we can have access to a lot of our traditional first foods that are extremely healthy and extremely important to who we are as people, not just to our health, but to our identity. There's not a lot of opportunities for really good, healthy food here in these small communities along the river on the reservation. The river does offer that. It's not living up to its full potential right now because of all the degradation that's happened. We have this innate reciprocal relationship with the river and fish and the land. And so we need it to be healthy for us to be healthy. My name is Louisa McCovey. I'm the York Tribe Environmental Department Director. We're at a point in our history as Yurok people where we catch as much fish as possible throughout the year to sustain ourselves, but it's not enough. So the USDA declared the Yurok Indian Reservation a food desert. There are parts of our reservation that are so remote that they don't have electricity. And in some of those places, folks have to drive two hours to a local place where they can get food. And even in those instances, it's access to a mini mart. It's not a supermarket. It's not a place where folks can have readily available access to fresh, healthy food. And so that's a problem. That's something that we're hoping to address with our food sovereignty program. We're here on the Iraq Reservation on this 48 acre parcel of land where we're building our food sovereignty program.
there's this like incredibly diverse habitat here all in one little area and there's real potentials to sort of restore our relationship with the land here. It's my hope that the, you know, it just welcomes us back with kind of open arms. Okay, the journey into the forest. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. So this is like rearing habitat for coho. We want to pull out all of this invasive blackberry, restore the creek, you know, enhance the habitat for coho. So this parcel is really kind of ideal for our situation. The location for one, it really is going to allow us to foster that intergenerational knowledge sharing because it's right next to the school that serves mostly our tribal members and we can build that right in. Our kids along with us are built and born with this fire inside to help the earth, to fix the earth, to do something good for their people. I'm optimistic that when my children are, are my age, that things will be different and things will be better and, and they will have the opportunity to teach their children the ways of, of the Yurok people and not be hampered by low fish runs.